This is Twit. Bloomberg had a story this week that esports is fading. The hype around esports is fading as investors and sponsors dry up. And I was just saying a couple of weeks ago, I thought esports was about to take over from the NFL and FIFA and everybody. I guess I was wrong. Uh, fund funding sources are dwindling. Signs abound. This is Cecilia D'Anastasio at uh, Bloomberg writing. Signs abound that athletic competition via video games <laughs> doesn't have anywhere near the earning potential investors anticipated. Doesn't this, doesn't this come back to what you were saying, Connie? With you know, we're coming out of lockdown now, so you know, just sitting in playing games all all the time just isn't isn't the option that it was, you know, a couple of years ago. Well, I think people want to sit around and watch games, as everybody I know has been watching the World yeah. Cup this past yeah. week. But yes, I think uh, the market is changing. But I also think one of the biggest changes is that the ad market is collapsing. And by that, I mean a lot of advertisers are concerned about inflation and the recession, whether we're in a recession or not in a recession, mm -hmm. and they have pulled back their ad spend. And that is affecting everyone. All media companies are seeing a massive shortfall in ad spending because companies who have the dollars are very cautious. And that obviously affects this esports industry where advertising is going to be a big chunk of their revenue. So if you don't have money to invest and there's no growth, well, that causes a little bit of a problem no matter what business you're in. Well, but that's a, so let me, that's an interesting question. Isn't this just a, a part of the economic cycle? It's down now, but it'll, it'll come back. God, I hope so. it'll come back later. Because we're seeing that too in podcast ad sales. I don't know. I mean, I, th I think it's working in in some regards. Um, I mean, Alex and I are both. I'm um, not sure about the economy, but I mean, we're both for Formula One fans, and we're down in the down season at the moment. And now esports is trying to take over, and you try watching it's some of these races, fun. and it's, no, yeah. it's nowhere near as much fun. But I always think when I think of that, I think of how I enjoy cricket. <laughs> I don't know the game, so I don't. Right, <laughs> <laughs> and I think to some degree, it's, I'm, frankly, I found the same thing with soccer. I, I mean, that one that that game between England and the U.S. that ended with nothing, nothing tie. That to me was <clears throat> like watching paint dry. But that's <laughs> I recognize that's probably because I don't have the same you know understanding of the sport. So maybe that's all that's missing in esports. Maybe you need to learn more well, about no, Dota I th too. I think because it's virtual, you you lose something. You know, if it's not. You know, I, I've tried watching esports racing, and there's not that you know a car, two cars bumped together, and the software you know puts a slows one down a bit, and the rest of it. But it's not quite the same. And I, I think the same with football. The same with probably is there an esports baseball thing? Um, but I mean esports cricket. I can't imagine anything worse. But nobody's doing <laughs> esports cricket. You're right. <laughs> But there e were esports baseball sounds like like something that you have yeah. to do in hell. No, no. I, I think they're yeah. doing League of Legends. They're doing Dota two. They're exactly. mostly doing mobas. They're doing games that are StarCraft that are exciting to watch. That you can have a team. Um, Alex, are you're a fan, right? Uh, I'm an enormous esports fan, and I'm also not surprised that this is where we're ending up right now because mm -hmm. there was a a boom of excitement in terms of what these teams might be worth, what these leagues might be able to put out. And it got ahead of the underlying strength of the industry. And so now we're seeing kind of the comeuppance of that. I agree that the ad apocalypse that every single one of us in the publishing world is staring down because mm -hmm. publications are shutting down. Everyone's worried about ad sales. Of course, it's going to impact esports. But really, I just think that people put a little bit more capital than the industry could properly digest into it. And now we're seeing that kind of shake out. Uh, it's a disappointment. But here's what I'll say. 10 years ago, if I had said, Leo, there's going to be League of Legends tournaments that regularly fill stadiums around the world, probably I would have been chuckled at and that would have been fine. But that's still happening. So the esports boom is still here. It's just not going to become the NFL 2.0 that people hoped for. But many things were a little bit overhyped in the last couple of years and have, have come down since. So I don't think this is a uniquely esports thing. I'll just say, uh, bummer, you know. <laughs> uh, do you think it'll come back? Is it because I mean... It's so funny because, uh, and maybe this is just a side effect of the, you know, the obsession with quarterly results and the way the stock market works that it's, it's always, what have you done for me lately? And there's no sense of long-term thinking. So it's down now it's over, but it's normal for there to be ups and downs where all of tech is going down because it, there was such a high during COVID mm. and now it's recovering. Probably not 
to the level even before COVID. I mean, if you look at stock prices, for the most part, they're still ahead of January 2020. So I, I feel like it's a short-sighted thing to say, oh, yeah, esports is over. Or is it? Is it really? Is it? Connie, I mean, isn't this just part of the ups and downs? I mean, yeah, we're all, you know, I'm sure CNET's ad, ad sales is, I don't, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but I know our ad sales are tightening. Um, I think that's just, but it's going to, but I have a is faith. It, is that, it going to come back? Yeah, I have Look, faith that it's going to come back. I mean, I was just listening to everything that you were saying about just the quarterly cycle and people looking for revenue. And somebody spent seven years covering public companies at Bloomberg. Yes, people want profit now. Instant gratification takes too long. Yeah, so right. is it going to come back or not? Should it? I don't know the answer to that question because I am not an esports fan. All credit to you, Alex, for doing it. I like to go outside. But oh, <laughs> oh, oh this know. is good. The shots fired back and forth. <laughs> I was going to apologize for taking a shot at Leo earlier, but now that I know the guns are out, I'm not okay. Going to. Okay. It, everybody, well, I'm just saying that because you're about is to over. Not go Everyone outside, calm so down. Calm down. No, you're right, Connie. Yeah. So you, that's good. I forget that you also cover business for a long time. So you really. You've seen this business cycle before. I, and I have to tell you, I have become extremely cynical about business in the U.S. <laughs> right now. Look, people want profits at all costs. And, you know, this idea that we have to have so many billionaires and that that is the aspirational goal of people coming out of school, not to build something amazing, but to become a billionaire. That's sad, I mean, yeah. that kind of worries me and makes mm -hmm. me very, very sad. What are we looking at right now in the tech industry in general? We're looking at companies laying off tons of people. Is it because those people were doing a great job and the market has shrunk? No, it's part of the correction of those companies. They grew too fast. They're, they're a little bit bloated. So they're taking an opportunity in the market to retrench, which is what every business does whenever there's a downturn in the economy. Does that mean that, uh, you know, some businesses are not going to suffer more than others. Of course, some businesses will go away because the business market will dry up for them. So it is definitely, we live in a very unforgiving, profit-driven world. I mean, look at what happened at Twitter. Let's let's save on, uh, you know, the single largest expense of any company is staff. So let's go into Twitter and eviscerate 50% of the team. Are, did they need to cut 50% of those people? Maybe, I don't know. I don't have the inside track on what everybody was doing at Twitter, but you know that there's a more reasonable way to do it than that. But this quest for the almighty dollar has yeah. really taken hold. And even, I'm gonna get off my soapbox in just a second. I was watching a doc documentary not too long ago about Hershey, the guy who started Hershey Chocolate. And he set up his company town in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and you know, employed all of the people who actually also ran in town. And somebody, he went out one day to the field and someone was showing him a tractor and said, look at this, we can now have these tractors and they'll do the work of 40 men. And it was the start of the depression. And he said, park the tractors and hire the 40 people hmm. because it's more important that we keep those people's livelihood. Can you imagine any of our tech giants no. having that argument with themselves today? No. And so, yes, it's, it's, it is a quest for almighty the, dollar. The, the, the tech companies I'm are sorry. the analog of the tractor seller in this hmm. story, right? They, the words, <laughs> they're selling the tractors. They want to. They want to put take people out of the uh, job market. Um, well, no, I mean the. the sorry, Alex. Go sorry, on. Ian. Please. No, no. Off to you, mate. Okay, I'll, I'll just say. Can to, you to start hating point. each other like you hate me? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no. Being too friendly. We, <laughs> Knock look, it off. He, he, he likes watching cars go fast. I like watching cars go fast. Therefore, we're brothers. You know sorry. what? We're, you know what? You know what I'm doing in November of next year. What are you doing? Las Vegas F1. Oh, I got yes. my tickets. Got my nice. hotel room. My word. Okay. So, I'm so gonna, there. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm going to have to mug you after the after the Very show. Excited. Sorry. I'm just, We're uh, going to be <laughs> sitting in the stands that are over the Bellagio fountains, watching these cars. <laughs> so is that like getting million a, a dollar day cars? Or? <laughs> yeah. These million dollar cars traveling down the strip at 200 miles an hour. I cannot wait. <gasps> that's it's over. That's going to be that's going to be excellent. But. Um, Back to the the, the oh, sorry, about, yes. um, no no you're fine um, about tech companies and and their approach to labor. If you go to a lot of these major tech companies back in the day, you know pre COVID, a lot of their workers were essentially contracted out to third comp third party companies, so that way they didn't have to employ yes. them and, and kind of pay them. This was the bus drivers, the people who it still happens. People, Microsoft hires tons of contractors, yeah, so well, they, they don't do. through a third party company, so they don't have to pay them benefits and. 
and they don't have to deal with labor issues right. and so yeah. forth. And I, I think it's a disgrace. And I think it shows that American capitalism, which I am fun, I, I'm still net positive in favor of, um, has some rot in it that we could uh, exterminate. I, I, it depresses me how we treat people. Um, and back to the esports point, it's it's it is cyclical. But I'll, I'll just say that I think it's going to be here forever, and it's not going to die. It'll just be a sad place for a couple of years, and it'll come back. Do you think long know. term I, I think is I, the real question? Is so then long term, can esports truly be as engaging, uh, and as we don't want to measure it in profit, but might as well profitable as the big sports today, NFL and NBA and. Well, I mean, the major, the major profit in sports is broadcasting and then ancillary services. Yeah. Now, broadcasting, esports can take some of that, but, you know, there's an enormous amount of money goes into the stadiums, into stuff that's sold live. That's true. I, I mean, there are esports stadiums all over the country now. Yeah. Nice ones. Yeah. So, I and know. I have to say, I watched, uh, I was watching the uh, uh, League of Legends, I think it was League of Legends finale in San Francisco. Did you see the... They had Little Nas X in the opening show and everything. I, I think I played a little bit of that, except it uh, probably was taken down on the show a couple of weeks ago. Um, but what was impressive to me, impressive to me, and bodes to me bodes well in long term, is the announcers. To five years ago, esports announcers were terrible, <laughs> right? They were they they, they they were they sucked the life out of the thing. Now they're good. <laughs> They yeah. are as good as any NFL or uh, NBA announcer. They bring life to it, and they need to because these games are complicated, hard to understand, mm. uh, and they need to bring people in. There's also the problem of, and this may be a more intractable problem, the people playing these games don't look so good. Because when you're playing um, a game like Dota 2, you're kind of slack-jawed and glassy-eyed. Have you seen British rugby players? I mean, it's like... <laughs> no, they're good-looking. hanging down. No, but they're good-looking. And... These guys... they. I mean, watching somebody play a game is not. Ex I mean, that's bad, right there. Well, you you don't you don't watch the esports game to watch the players' faces. Well, they that's give you a little problem. player cam so yeah. you can see. Re that's well, a problem. That's. I mean, right. up what's what up close and personal. We need to get up close and personal with these guys. I, I will say that esports announcements has gotten a lot better. It's really. And I, I was do impressed. think, as, boy, especially the the League of Legends teams have some really really insanely high levels of prep. I watched a uh, a backstage type video of one um, League of Legends tournament and how they had the meetings talking about the matches that were coming up and what they were going to talk about. Yeah. And it was just a level of preparation that I found uh, just very professional and impressive. And so they put in the work. But I will say, I haven't played League of Legends in a couple of years because I played other stuff. And I came back to watching a little bit of The Lost World and I was like, <laughs> they've changed everything. Oh, no. What are, what are these symbols? And I, I felt like... Um, now you know how I feel. Yeah, it's like, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, it's, you have to stay current, and I think that's tough given the amount of competition out there. There's not that many sports that make it on TV, frankly. That's going to hurt. That is going to hurt esports because you have to mm. pick a winner. You have to. You can't so have 15 titles. games that everybody plays. It's too right. many. you got to pick one. No two. one's ever going to watch an Age of Empires esports thing. Oh, it's I would. Just, that's exciting. Yeah, but it takes hours. Oh, well, that's true. You gotta speak okay. it up. You gotta speak. So does a baseball looking game. At, looking at and Connor's a cricket game takes weeks, so come well, on. Well, yeah, but, you know. I, I think I think we can take Connie's camera shot as, as indicative of what the audience feels about our esports. She's, e so, <laughs> bored. <laughs> She's so, so bored. Dull. I'm sorry. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. Seven dollars a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners, and finally the Twit Plus feed. With shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.